remember enlightenment or spiritual practice, whatever name you want to give it, this is only about maintaining a proper state of awareness, a state of consciousness. It's not about knowing more than the next guy. It's not about being righter than the next guy. It's only about being in this higher state of consciousness. And this higher state of consciousness has been called many things. Nirvana, bliss, But what are those things to us? We live in fast-paced world. You know, people tell me, I, how, do, how do I do this? Because I have to work, or I can't do this, I have to do this or that. <clears throat> but really, it's not about that. It's not about ignoring all your duties. You know, that old Buddhist adage goes, uh, before enlightenment, uh, carry wood, chop water, after enlightenment, carry wood, chop water. Um, and that's because what's changed is you. Nothing else around you has changed, but you have changed. And things, of course, afterwards around you will change after a while, because once you change inside, your life will change outside, that's for sure. But for the time being, what we're talking about, nothing changes except you. And that change is not a change to nirvana, it's not a change to bliss, it's not a change to being in the heart. That might confuse some people. It's not about anything that the mind can conceptually grasp. It's not about saying, okay, this is my goal and I'm going to live up to it. That's not it, that's a failure. What it is about, is about dropping these barriers, dropping this bullshit that we've been subjecting ourselves to, these, this programming, it's about completely dropping it, letting it go 100%. If you find yourself questioning yourself, doubting yourself, second guessing yourself, just let it go. Don't say anything else. Observe that silence and let that silence become your equilibrium. Instead of your equilibrium being this perspective of reality called the new age or called spirituality let it go and see what your natural perspective is see what your pure essence is without any programming and when you see that the attempt to name it or to define it seems almost perverse to you it seems like oh what do you think you're doing you can't do that because my idea of enlightenment is not the same as your idea of enlightenment or your experience. Although it's the exact same programming that's creating our, our revolution, my experience is unique. Just like my experience of the color red might not be the same as your experience of the color red. So I can't go out there and tell you this is what you do, this and that. All I can tell you is to let go. All I can tell you is to see that there's nothing there, that there's just complete emptiness. And that doesn't have to be nihilistic. A lot of people, when I say that we're emptiness and you can't define it, they say, oh, well, I'm not emptiness, you know, they get all upset. But it's not about that. It's not about saying it's a lack of anything. Look around in the universe. Where is there a complete lack of everything? There's no such thing as a pure void in the universe. Everything is dynamic, it's moving, it's, it's contracting and expanding, and it's all contracting and expanding under an equilibrating center, like the spokes of a wheel radiating from the center of the wheel. The center of the wheel never moves, but the spokes of the wheel are turning. Okay, like I was saying, so if you look out and you observe just without any pre-definition what the universe is about, then, like I was saying, you'll see expansion and contraction emanating out of an equilibrating silence. That center point on which everything ro orbits or rotates around, that gravitational center point is awareness. And so everything, every point in space is awareness. You're in one huge ocean of consciousness. 
And so that consciousness is not separate. The separation exists only from this contraction and expansion. This expanding, this sucking up and spitting out of energy creates the illusion of separation, this hologram that we see around us. But it all orients around that equilibrating center point, and that's you. That's everything. That's the only thing that is God. The wheels within wheels. Ezekiel's wheel. The Merkaba. Now, when you can perceive as that, when you can become that in each moment, then what? Then you are as you are. But until that point, you are not as you are. You are as you think that you might be. <laughs> But these thoughts of what we think that we might be have been fed to us from culture and TV and whatnot from all directions until that's all that we know until we choke on it until we can't see anything we're just it's like there's just a hose of culture being shoved down our throat until we're just full and we're just overloading to the brim with this crap with this garbage spewing out of every orifice just pure trash so as you can tell, I do not like culture. I do not like conditioning. You have to break free of that. That's, I will always, always, always speak about this until there is no conditioning left. I will keep going on and just driving this point home that we need to let go of our conditioning. We need to take the take our grip off of this conditioning. When we start to think of ourselves, oh, maybe I'm getting uh, anxious, or maybe, oh, I'm, I'm too this, or maybe I'm oh, too that, or maybe I'm whatever it is. Let go of that whole rad race. Because only then are you in a position to be as you are truly. And when you be as you are truly, miracle takes place. Because you are a miracle. There's never been a bigger miracle than you, than the existence of awareness. That is the biggest mystery and miracle random mutations highly doubted random mutations would not produce beautiful order you know there's a law of thermodynamics that says that things uh th they become less order they go from order to chaos they go from order to disorder if that was true if everything denigrated from order to disorder then we would not be able to sit here and be having this very ordered conversation it would just be pure randomness, like scribbles on a, on a piece of paper. And it's because, as I was saying earlier, every point in space is that equilibrating center, that awareness, that self. And that is what you are. And I'll repeat again, it's not about knowing it, but being it. And you can't know it to be it. You have to simply be it. So when someone asks, who are you? Completely take attention away from that urge to bring back those memories, bring back those parameters or conditions. Okay. And regenerate your awareness in each moment. Renew your consciousness in each moment. Like a flow of water down a river your consciousness become new and new and new and then you'll start to ride this wave of of upliftment which will actually translate into etheric energy or electromagnetism and you'll feel your auric field start radiating and renewing in this equilibrating center in the heart center and you'll feel invigorated and enlivened you'll be an experiencing reality as you've never experienced it before. It'll